Hi, uh, I'm Y, and I'm not the presentation-giving type, so I didn't make any slides like the previous two people had, but I've got some cool demos to show you that kind of like hopefully demonstrate what these past two um, talks have been talking about. So to start off, um, I work on IPFS, and I do been recently doing a bunch of cool stuff with IPFS and IPLD and like integrating different blockchain stuff. And I've been paying really close attention to uh, Kumavis's interesting Ethereum stuff, and also been working on um, doing the same thing that he's been doing for Ethereum for Zcash and Bitcoin, which is great because they have the, pretty much the same exact format, so I don't have to write that much code. Um, it's fantastic. So to start off, um, I've got this nice little. Uh, is that big enough? Is that too big? Oh, crap. What did I do? Um, I don't know. Oh well. It's gone. Um, I've got this IPLD object. And this is, the, this is a JSON representation of the format, which is not stored as JSON. It gets converted to CBOR, which is like some cool one to one mapping. Um, but it's easy to write JSON. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's just like a regular object, um, except for two interesting things here. Um, this is an IPLD link. Um, and so what that does is it, this object can point content, address, content addressingly to other objects. Um, and I can do interesting, th so what I can do is I can take this and I can ingest it into IPFS and get a little hash. Well, little is uh, not quite what it is. Um, and then I can get that back out if I can type really easily. Oh, and it's ugly. And it's the same, basically the same thing, a little reordered because JavaScript doesn't care. Um, and then I can do other things like um, walk paths on this. So I can say, you know, slash foo gives me bar. Or slash baz gives me this array. And I can subscript that array to give an index, right? Um, the other thing I can do is I can index this Batman array, right? Which now, oh my god, I broke something. Oh well. Um, <laughs> I can get this object. Oh my god, what is that? Um, that is actually the JSON output of a picture stored in IPFS. So if we, instead of trying to get it as a DAG, we'd say, I just want that raw data. Um, so I'm just going to cat this. And woo, look at all that garbage. You know what's really cool is that can go. And it's a kitty. Um, and then the other one, which I named quite well, is a badger. So like, what I, the, the reason those are in there is I did IPFS add, and it gave me a hash, and I just took and put it in that object's links. Um, so if we look back here, that is the hash of that cat, and that is the hash of that badger. And so you can build these objects, and you can design whatever data structure you want. And IPFS can walk through it and walk along it um, and kind of like do cool things with it. And so this is just the CBOR IPLD um, DAG type stuff. So the cool stuff I've been working on that's more relevant to today is um, I've been working on this Bitcoin and Zcash stuff. And I'm just going to demo the Zcash stuff because I didn't feel like syncing the entire Bitcoin blockchain to my laptop. Um, I don't have that much storage space. So I have this little IPLD object that has Zcash and a, a link. Um, so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put this into IPFS the same way, and grab this. And I'm not going to bother to um, I'll put this. I'm just going to go straight for what it's linking to. And that's a lot of text. What we're seeing here is a Zcash block, a raw Zcash block. And it's actually not, the format is not changed at all. The format that IPFS is storing it as the exact same bits as the Zcash um, block hash. Um, so if we do, just to kind of further my point, so this is the hash of the Zcash block, right? Um, everybody knows, or Hopefully people you know, kind of get like, so when you're mining a, a block in any most blockchains, you're trying to find a block that has a bunch of zeros at the front. And so if you look at this hash, 
there's not a lot of zeros at the front. Well, the, pro the reason for that is because it's base 58. I took the Z off because that's telling me it's base 58. It's base 58. So let's convert it from base 58 to um, hex. Oh, whoops. Let me take a few things off. Uh, hopefully this works. Oh, yeah, there's zeros at the end, right? It's one of the ends. So this is a Zcash block hash that was mined to have a bunch of zeros at the end. And so the, hash, the data is exactly the same. It hashes to be the same thing, which I think is like really cool, which means we don't have to like rewrite the format. And I can do cool things like I want to access the difficulty of this block. Oops. God, I'm great at typing today. The difficulty of this block since JSON mangles numbers is some thing. Um, yeah, tell me about it. Um, I can access the parent of this block. It's another block, a whole bunch of you know, text. I can access the parent of the parent of the block. And guess what? The parent of the parent of the parent of the block. And even cooler, though, I mean, sure, you can walk the blockchain all the way back, and that's great. Um, but where am I? I can access the transaction Merkle tree of this block. And this is a little weird. So when you look at the transaction Merkle tree, you're like, oh, it's a list of things. But no, it's not a list of things. It's actually a tree, and it's a binary tree. So the Merkle root in you know, Bitcoin type blocks is the hash of the root of the tree. So when you get the hash of the root of the tree, you're going to get an array with two things in it, the left of the tree and the right of the tree. And so we can walk this down, say like the left of the tree, and that gives us you know, the zero block. Cool. Look, there's like inputs. Let me make that prettier. And so this is a uh, transaction that we referenced through some path through IPFS. Has the exact same data as it would in the blockchain itself. And you can walk through this. You can get the values. You can get like, oh look, you know, this many 10 uh, 10 Zcash was sent to that address. Um, 2.5 Zcash was sent to that address. This is the mining reward. Um, and so you can go through and you can access any of these transactions, find the values, and operate on them. And this is really cool. I'm super excited about this. Um, what, I was, what I'm hoping to do with this is do things like, so here's the script, right? Um, who here knows about Bitcoin op returns um, and how it's a nasty, ugly hack to put data in transactions? Well, one thing I'm going to try to do is get an op return, get this to be able to follow links, like content address links that you store in the op return, which would be like slash script, and we'd have to somehow figure out some format of that. But that's like the next step along this way, so that in the op return, I could put the hash of an Ethereum block in a Bitcoin or Zcash transaction, and you just walk through that chain. Um, and that's probably one of the things I'm going to be working on this week uh, during this hackathon, is getting walking paths through blockchains which is going to be cool. And I, I haven't written the Ethereum parsing code yet, but somebody in this room has already in JavaScript, so translating that to Go should be easy enough. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. So once you have this, you can do some cool stuff like, well, now all the data is here and it's accessible. What do you do with that? Well, I had somebody who writes JavaScript. Write me some JavaScript. Um, let's see, how do I? move things uh, around. So we wrote this little thing uh, called, the, we call it the Zcash Explorer. Um, and it's a static app um, that I'm going to hopefully demo. Not remembering how to do mirrored screens is very uh, strange. Wow, that's big. Um, Chrome, you can chill out. Oops. All right, so we're going to go to the hash that I just generated and shrink it down a little bit. So we have a Zcash block explorer. Um, no, don't reset it to default. Go away. So what you can do is this is just a nice little JSON you know, like you know HTML representation of a block. I can walk back through the box and like I don't know I can just keep clicking right. Um, I can go to the transactions 
And some of the transactions are weird because it doesn't like there's a weird thing about the um, the daemon where it like if a transaction isn't interesting to you for some reason it won't sync it to your computer. So I'm not entirely sure of the problem there. Like it's behaving weirdly right now. Um, Damn it, I wanted to demo that. But uh, yeah, you can do cool things like this. And you can have a blockchain explorer like blockchain.info without a central server. Like you don't have to rely on somebody to be hosting this, like a site to view static hash linked data for you. You can just do it yourself and view it like locally, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah, and that, is about as much demo as I have right now. I hope that was filling enough time. Yeah? Cool. Thank you.